So factors influencing our medication interactions. Uh, many variables that influence medication interaction. When we're administering a medication, it's important to know um, to not only know how they affect the patient, but also how they may affect other medications that were previously administered. So we talked about the polypharmacy already. We've talked about the patient that is just on numerous other medications. Um, I think 25 or 28 is the highest I've ever seen uh, on a patient's med list. I was like, that's insane. Uh, I don't like five or six, much less 28 medications that they take a day. So you know they're working on one another. So something's canceling something out. It's not working, obviously. So we try to go with uh, predictable responses, and this is where our side effects come in. So this is the desired ones. This is the ones I'm anticipating. This is what I'm looking for. Um, Iotronic Iatrogenic uh, responses and iatrogenic response is an adverse condition inadvertently induced in a patient by the treatment given. One example is a urinary tract infection that develops in a patient after insertion of an indwelling catheter, such as your Foley catheter. When the administration of medication results in symptoms that mimic naturally occurring disease states, it is known as an iatrogenic medication response. Unpredictable responses. So we, if a patient already knows that they have an allergy or they're hypersensitivities, then okay. However, sometimes you end up administering it and you find out that they have that hypersensitivity. So um, they end up uh, the medication activates that immune response and you end up seeing that allergic reaction to whatever degree all the way up to anaphylaxis. Um, a delayed reaction is known as serum sickness. This type of reaction is a hypersensitivity similar to an allergy and occurs uh, a considerable time after a stimulus such as a skin inflammation occurring hours or days after exposure to the allergen. Unlike other allergic reactions to medications that occur soon after administration, serum sickness can develop 7 to 14 days after the first exposure to a medication. So I've been taking this, this is, and this all of a sudden has just started. In rare cases, the patient may experience a completely unique response that is specific to that person. It is not seen in any other patients. This situation is known as an idiosyncrasy. An idiosyncratic uh, reaction is a peculiar or individual reaction to a drug. For example, if a patient were administered nitroglycerin and then experienced a seizure, this would be an idiosyncratic reaction because seizure is not expected reaction when administering nitroglycerin. Patient who take Patients who take a particular medication for an extended period of time build up a tolerance to it. In these cases, the patients uh, will have a decreased response to the same amount of medication, often requiring higher doses than normal after a period of time. Once they build up this tolerance, they um, decrease their response to the same amount of medication. So they have to go back see if their physician will increase their dose or um, they have, may have to try something different. Uh, once they develop that tolerance uh, to other drugs in a certain class as a result of prolonged administration of another medication in that same class, known as cross-tolerance, this phenomenon is often seen in patients who take uh, many pain medications. When patients are taking medications such as oxycodone, they become tolerant to opiate-based medications. If morphine is administered to the for the pain, the patient may not have the same response to other uh, response to the medicine 
as other patients will because of the cross tolerance. A disease or a condition that does not respond to treatment is known as refractory. Any me medication needs to reach a minimum concentration in the target tissue before it becomes effective. That concentration is reached by providing a specific dose. A cumulative effect is the increased effect when a medication is given in several successive doses, which might result in a therapeutic or non-therapeutic uh, effect. Drug dependence is your psychological and sometimes physical state resulting from continued use of a substance. Characteristic behaviors response include a convulsion to take the drug on a continuous or periodic basis to experience its effects or to avoid the discomfort of its absence. A person will have significant symptoms if he or she stops using the medication. Habituation is the term for physical tolerance of and psychological dependence on a drug or drugs. So just remember that habituation. Many patients take multiple medications at one time. If it is possible for the effects of one medication to alter the response to another medication, the phenomenon is known as drug interaction. A drug interaction can be fatal. The interaction may not always be anticipated. Even if two medications are sympathomimetics, for example, it does not necessarily mean the patient will experience a more dramatic sympathetic response. It is possible to see the opposite response or a completely unrelated response. When a patient is taking multiple medications, one medication could block the body's response to another medication. Drug antagonism. You can use this fact as an advantage. For example, if the patient has taken an opiate-based drug such as morphine, you have the ability to administer another medication, Narcan, to block the response of the morphine. So, the summation effect is an addictive effect. This is two drugs that have the same or similar effect increase the patient's response when both are administered to the patient. When the patient receives two drugs that have the same effect but produce a response greater than the sum of their individual responses, the result is known as synergism. At times, the interaction between two medications can cause one drug to enhance the effect of another known as potentiation. For example, acetaminophen and alcohol interact. In this case, it is well known that high doses of acetaminophen are damaging to the liver. When alcohol is ingested along with acetaminophen, more of the medication is taken up into the liver and may result in acute liver failure. Some potentiation effects are known and can be exploited to achieve a desired effect. In other cases, potentiation may occur unexpectedly. A direct biochemical interaction that takes place between two drugs is interfering is referred to as interference. So reducing those medication errors that we've talked about, we want to make sure we do our med cross check, med administration cross check. So med check, ready, and this is you and your partner working together. I'm going to give, and I'm going to give the dose, the drug name, my route, my rate, and my reason. Then you're going to talk about contraindications. If none, no contraindications. How much are you going to give? State the drug concentration, the volume to be administered in milliliters or milligrams and milliliters. I encourage you to do both. Um, that way I'm making sure I've got the right protocol and I'm giving the right amount of volume. We'll talk about that a little later on as we get into our medication administration. And then to show the vial or the bottle to the second provider so that they can verify, yes, this is what it is. Guys, we know that this is a challenge when it's just you and your partner and you're driving down the road. We get that. 
in a perfect world, we would all live, you know, have three people on a truck, and I'd always have that checks and balances, but we don't. So, we have to do the best we can, but try to always make sure that you are uh, doing your med cross-check so that um, you do decrease those med errors.